Hello everybody. Okay, so in today's video, what I'd like to do is introduce you to the brand new Vanpack 2.0. With this vehicle, modern, state-of-the-art, there's a load of features on there I want to talk you through. So we're going to walk around the exterior of the vehicle first of all, and then I'll take you inside. So firstly, Sam Zara unit, fully installed, that you can see through the window screen now. We have a 360 camera system, obviously for vehicle security, compliance and vehicle incidents. We have LED beacons across the body of the vehicle. And then if you follow me, on the side door, and this includes the rear door, we have a deadlock system, which means that basically when you're not utilizing that part of the vehicle, we should always keep these fully locked to prevent vehicle theft or asset theft. You can see the brand new graphic design, which makes it look very modern, uh, very futuristic. We love it, very proud of it. And you'll notice on the rear panels of the vehicle, we have the integral screen. This enables us to better communicate to our public, the communities we serve, and obviously highlighting how long we're gonna be there for, what we're doing now, and how we can prevent network issues in the future. Okay, so the rear of the vehicle. So we've got the Thameswater Mancha of Bin It, Don't Block It. We have obviously information for third party drivers about it being a 62 mile an hour vehicle that is limited, that there is CCTV operation going at all times, and obviously highlighting to cyclists the dangers of trying to travel up the inside of us when we're turning left or when we're stationary at traffic lights. We have a deadlock system here again for the same reason, and we have a T-bar bumper system to protect our vehicles, because when we look at trends of vehicle damage, typically, it's the rear of the vehicle bumper area that seems to get damaged the most. So this should reduce, minimize that. To better prevent vehicle damage, uh, we have reversing sensors throughout and all of that imagery goes onto the dashboard so the driver can see it first hand. We also have um, obviously the integral step or the built-in step, sorry, that enables you to get into the vehicle safer. At the very top of the vehicle, you'll notice the vehicle reversing camera that goes straight onto the dashboard, like I mentioned a moment ago. Okay, follow me. The secondary screen, the same graphics you see before. And then the final part I just wanted to mention to you guys before we go into the vehicle is we have a reduced size, reduced size wing mirror system. And on there is a mirror to give better reflection for vehicles that are approaching so that we can avoid clashing of wing mirrors from vehicle to vehicle. Okay, so let's take a look inside. Welcome to the inside of your van. Okay, so what I want to talk about first of all is safe entry and exiting of your vehicle. To do this, if you look down, you'll see an anti-slip plate. Excellent. And then to go inside with that, we have the hand grip on the top part of the cab. What we always recommend is when you're getting in or out of your vehicle, never rely on the steering wheel as a means of holding onto because that does move. You need a fixed point to grab onto, okay? So literally, hand, foot, hand, bring yourself into the vehicle, nice and safely, okay? We don't want to be rolling ankles getting in or out of the vehicle. Right, let's look at storage. So for storage then, we have many areas. We have the overhead compartments on both passenger and driver side. We have the top part of the dashboard where you have departments there where you can stick stuff in. You have the middle areas of the dashboard and the lower area of the dashboard. Needless to say, you've got a glove box and needless to say, you have multiple areas within the door panel. You can also store stuff too. So there should not be a want for storing stuff, in my opinion. Two yellow areas. This top one is for first aid provisions and eye washes. So easily accessible anytime. And then in the centre part, we have here an area for where you should be securing your hard hats while in transit and your safety footwear if you'd like to wear alternative footwear when driving. This is also an opportunity to be able to store devices for security reasons when you're outside working. So they're not on display and the vehicle's not getting broken into to try and steal a phone or a wallet or a rucksack, for example. The great thing is, it comes with keys so we can lock away our devices, safe in the knowledge that it's secure whilst we're working. Okay, moving on to some of the features. Air conditioning, brilliant. Night heater for the front and middle part of the vehicle, brilliant. 
We have a reversing camera that we spoke about on the last part of the video. And if I put that into reverse, you'll see there that we've got a better field of vision. Less likely now to have incidents when maneuvering into parking spots. It also has the parking sensors that enables you to hear an audible alarm for when you're getting close to objects. Fantastic. We also have the control unit at the top here. So if I talk you through that briefly. So this is how we power our beacons. Our internal LED lights throughout the vehicle. Our work lamps that illuminate the areas outside of our vehicle. And then the inverter is the button that will power up your screens. All the usual sort of features and settings there in the center control area um, is what you'd expect from any vehicle. Other than that, I'm happy. The last part I want to show you is the handbrake. So if you can just look down here beside the yellow box. A new feature, the reason I want to talk you through this is because a lot of people have been confused by this. So you can see that the handbrake is down at the moment, but in actual fact it is activated. The way in which we deactivate it is we pull the handbrake up and then we press the button and lift another two inches and then it will drop away. This means now we're able to move away from our position. To engage the handbrake, simplistically, you pull the handbrake up, you'll hear the ratchet system and the handbrake will drop away. Now, if I take my foot off the brake, you can see that we're not moving, the vehicle is stationary. Okay, I hope that helps. Let's go and take a look at the rest of the van. Okay, so before I take you in the middle part of the vehicle, I just want to highlight again that it's super important that we make sure we deadlock the vehicle when we're working away, okay, to keep this thing secure at all times. Anyway, that's been removed. We go inside the middle part of the vehicle and look at that. What a treat. Okay, so what we have is a place for everything, okay, so it should be really easy to spot if kit's missing or the condition of it okay so we can replenish it or replace if needs be i want to talk about firstly before we go into the vehicle the look -see camera this is one of the new units that we have and there's more meterage on the reel which makes the reel more heavier so thinking that from a safety perspective we thought it was really important that we give you something that provides the ability to take off the equipment safely without obviously causing injury to any one of you guys out there on the patch okay so i'm going to talk about how you release the look -see. simply remove the clip that holds it steady. We have two securing pins here that we release and bring the tray forward ever so slightly. Okay, that now means that we can deploy this with ease. What I do recommend is you always stand face on to the reel because it enables you to be able to control the speed and the tilt of the tray. Okay, like so. Grab the top part of the look -see, bring it towards you and naturally, you can see here, there's the pivot point, it wants the tip. I control the speed and I control the angle until it reaches the floor. Okay, you have a securing pin here that enables that to be fastened to the tray so there's no risk of it falling off. And all we do in this case, we wanted to go and take this away to work now, we remove the pin and wheel the unit away. And obviously when putting the Eluxi back on again, we wheel it up, we secure the pin and then we'll look to push the tray back on again. However, I'm conscious that the strap is obviously in the mechanism at the moment so I'm just going to put that to one side and then as I said before face on we lift and we push we get to that pivot point and eventually the momentum will take it back like so we just need to remember to locate or position the secure securing pins in place again and then finally we replace the strap Last point of the look -see camera, which I think you'll be really impressed with, is we have an onboard, onboard computer system. And obviously with the memory card that's fitted to this unit, I don't know if you can see from there, but there's a port on the tray there that enables us to upload any images to a cloud that Rosa and the CCTV team can go and review at any time, which is pretty important. Okay, so there's obviously the memory stick there secured to the reel. So a really, really clever piece of kit. As we go around the vehicle now, we have obviously ground protection sheets. We have jellies for locating. We have two way radio systems with chargers available. We have LED floodlights. They come with their own stands, telescopic stands. 
to illuminate your work area. We have WD-40, cable ties, gloves, boot covers, disposable overalls, wipes, metal detector, clean film, stand pipes, and just behind me here, we've got the brand new one man manhole lifter. And then just in this part of the tray here, there's all its accessories. So you have different size T keys and you've got the ability to lift split covers as well, which is really, really clever. You've got the red and white danger tape, warning tape at the back there, and there's plenty of space, sorry, to put drain dye or spray paints in. Paper towel holder, coat hangers with a splash black paint, guide tubes, traffic cones secured with chain, disinfectant and disinfectant spray and inside here your waste disposal box the good thing about this waste disposal box just to let you know is if you unsecure it here this box does lift out so it can be taken out of the vehicle whenever needed as we exit the vehicle i just wanted to show you that we have a fresh air filter inside now you have a fan on the top that's blowing in constant fresh air which is great um, you have your led lights and obviously now we've got a more durable flooring system and obviously edge protection there so we will see less wear and tear on the floors of our vehicles obviously making sure that we utilize the steps that is the middle part done okay so let's take a look inside now, before I get too far into it, there's a couple of things about the doors that I want to quickly discuss with you. The first one is the magnetic holder. This allows us, let me just show you, to secure the vehicle safely whilst there's gusts of winds or strong winds, okay? So we know that if we're working at the back here, we're not going to be met with a surprise of a door closing on us, which is great news. The second part is this arm that some of the existing fleet that we have do not come with this. And obviously, as you can see with the door there, we can secure the doors at halfway point two. So for the same reasons that we don't get a nasty surprise. The second part to the door is the traffic management that you can see there, okay? So everything's got home now, meaning that it's not gonna get scratched, it's gonna last a little bit longer, why wouldn't you? The next part um, are these spanners. Um, there aren't any missing, that is exactly what you need for the type of work that you, you do out on site. So. There's a securing arm there, so we don't lose any. Okay, brilliant. This side, welfare provisions. So you can see we've got soaps and we've got creams and we've got sink again. It's up to you to keep these things full. If you don't, we'll be in the same situation that we're in now where a lot of the heating elements don't work anymore and you'll just have cold water, which is fine. It's compliant, but I'd much rather you have the option of having warm water as well. So up to you to keep topping this up. You've got your little flotation device there to see how full it is and obviously you've got the single tap this time round. You've also got the dispenser there, so no more boxes in the vehicle that leak or become nasty over time. We can simply let it drain out into the road because it's only dirty water from our hands. Nothing that's gonna pollute, okay? Perfect. Ensure that we always secure these back in again because the danger is we're gonna forget, we're gonna slam the door shut and then we're gonna get it trapped inside here and then we've got no hose. It's up to you to look after these vehicles, okay? T keys, um, or lifting keys I should say rather. So we've got an array of different lifting keys there for you. We can see what condition they're in. We can see that we're not missing any. And again, they're really easy to access at any time we need. I prefer you to use the single man lifter that we have, the manhole lifter buddy in the front of the vehicle. But obviously these are your secondary measures if needed. Right, okay, at the bottom, sledgehammer. Wrecking bar, rake, four-sided barrier, blockage rods. And what you'll notice with this one, that this time we have the lockable ones, which is great for you guys. Then we move up to the top part of the vehicle. You've got your work lights, you can see there. You've got your shovels, you've got your squeegees, and you've got your green two-inch hose there. If I lower this mechanism down, it's, it's really important that you, you look at how this works, how this operates. You hold on to the handle, you thumb across the lever, and the tray will slowly slide out, and it will stop at a certain point, which is absolutely fine, okay? 
There's something now we do to access the tools and equipment above there and we lift the device and it will slowly want to lower. You can see here we have a rubber block to protect the control panel. And there you have it. Bing! So we've got crowbars, pry bars, wire brushes, tape measures, screwdrivers, club hammer, bolsters, chisels, really, really frequently used equipment that is now easily accessible and not lost inside shelves or toolboxes. And again, we can see the condition of those. So if we ever need that are sort of defects in any way, we can report them and get replacements immediately. Okay, there's no excuses. Excellent. To return the tray, we simply lift it up. We push across. It's almost like a kitchen drawer in all honesty, when you look to remove a kitchen drawer. We push it up, slide it across to allow the safety pin to lock into position. Give it a wobble just to make sure, and we're happy. Obviously with the jetting equipment itself, um, you'll know, understand this equipment more than what I can possibly tell you. So you'll have to be trained on that if you haven't already. Um, and you can see there we have a suite of tools there, or equipment rather. So we have the pigtail, we have the array of different jet heads, the non-return bars. Obviously we've got the Allen keys there. We've got plungers, we've got dry, J, uh, the die, sorry, and we've got the remotes. And we have their spare plungers where needed. Moving over to the left hand side of the vehicle. So secured again, gully grabs, pedestrian ramp, tiger towel, and these are your interceptor cleaners. So we've got a lot of equipment now available in good condition, easily to access anytime we need it and it's secure at all times. It's important that you keep it like this. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the jet itself. So we've got a clever little feature here. I'll point it out first before we go into it. So you can see there's a roller system now. You can see there's a vision panel there. And if you look through the vision panel, you can see another roller system. So what I'm gonna do now is I've purposely left out some of the jet hose to be able to demonstrate this to you. You feed it through the roller system. Now I can look through the vision panel to kind of guide it through the best that I possibly can. I feed it through like so, and eventually it will hit the floor and then obviously I can push a bit more excess hose through and then I check it's clean and I've got easy access to my jet now and then I can start thinking about non-return bars and jet heads. The reason why we've got about this is for security of the engineer when jetting away from the vehicle. So now what I've got the ability to do with the remote is secure the doors, deadlock if I need to take away more of the hose that I need and then obviously I can operate the jetting equipment from a safe distance. Peace in the mind that no kids are going to come running up to the control panel, hitting buttons, making my work more dangerous. Okay, thank you.